When NASA's Perseverance rover touched down on the Martian surface last year, humans cheered from the confines of planet Earth. But if the space agency or others hope to leave and send astronauts to Mars, experts say they need to consider a technology that was studied decades ago but never fully developed, called the nuclear-powered rockets. But can these rockets actually get humans to Mars faster? Let's find out. Welcome to Space World. In today's video, we are going to talk about NASA's new plan to cut the journey to Mars in half. So if you want to know more about it, then stay with us until the end of the video. Far from Earth, whether in the void or on another world, power is life. A steady, strong flow of electricity is as crucial for operating computers and engines as it is for assuring access to corporeal necessities such as light and heat, breathable air and portable water and preparation or even growth of food. And one of the most potent and reliable ways to get all these vital kilowatts is via nuclear fission, something aspiring astronauts realized long before anyone ever reached space or developed nuclear weapons for that matter. Yet more than 60 years into the space age, nuclear fission for spaceflight remains mostly a dream. Now, however, as NASA pursues its Apollo-esque Artemis program to build a crewed lunar outpost with an eye toward eventual human landings on Mars, a rare alignment of technology, funding, and political will is on the verge of making spaceborne nuclear reactors a routine reality. Getting humans to Mars and back is rather hard, insanely difficult in fact. Many challenges confront NASA and other would-be Mars pioneers when planning missions to the Red Planet but chief among them is the amount of propellant needed. During the Apollo program 50 years ago, humans went to the moon using chemical propulsion, which is to say, rocket engines that burned liquid oxygen and hydrogen in the combustion chamber. This has its advantages, such as giving NASA the ability to start and stop an engine quickly, and the technology was then the most mature one for space travel. Since then, a few new in-space propulsion techniques have been devised, but none are better or faster for humans than chemical propulsion. That's a problem. NASA has a couple of baseline missions for sending four or more astronauts to Mars, but relying on chemical propulsion to venture beyond the moon probably won't cut it. The main reason is that it takes a whole lot of rocket fuel to send supplies and astronauts to Mars. Even in favorable scenarios where Earth and Mars line up every 26 months, a humans to Mars mission still requires 1,000 to 4,000 metric tons of propellant. If that's difficult to visualize, consider this. When upgraded to its Block 1B configuration, NASA's Space Launch System rocket will have to carry a capacity of 105 tons to low Earth orbit. NASA expects to launch this rocket once a year, and its cost will likely be around $2 billion for a flight. So to get enough fuel into orbit for a Mars mission would require at least 10 launches of the SLS rocket, or about a decade and $20 billion just for fuel. The bottom line, if we're going to Mars, we probably need to think about other ways of doing it. A new report from the National Academies of Sciences, Engineering and Medicine offers some answers about two such ways. Conducted at the request of NASA, a board-based committee of experts assessed the viability of two means of propulsion, nuclear thermal and nuclear electric, for a human mission launching to Mars in 2039. One of the primary takeaways of the report is that if we want to send humans to Mars, and we want to do so repeatedly and in a sustainable way, nuclear space propulsion is on the path said Bobby Braun, director for planetary science at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory and co-chair of the committee that wrote the report in an interview. The committee was not asked to recommend a particular technology, each of which rely on nuclear reactions but work differently. Nuclear thermal propulsion, or NTP, involves a rocket engine in which a nuclear reactor replaces the combustion chamber and burns liquid hydrogen as a fuel. Nuclear electric propulsion, or NEP, converts heat from a fission reactor to electrical power, like a power plant on Earth, and then uses this energy to produce thrust by accelerating an ionized propellant such as xenon. If you look at the committee's recommendations for NTP, 
we felt that an aggressive program built on the fundamental work that's been accomplished recently could get us there, Braun said of the Mars 2039 goal. For NEP, we felt that it was unclear if such a program could get us there, but we did not conclude that it could not get us there. Moreover, nuclear propulsion requires significantly less fuel than chemical propulsion, often less than 500 metric tons. That would be helpful for a Mars mission that would include several advanced missions to pre-stage cargo on the Red Planet. Nuclear propulsion fuel consumption is also more consistent with the launch opportunities afforded by the orbits of Earth and Mars. During some conjunctions, which occur about every 26 months, the propellant required to complete a Mars mission with chemical propellants is so high that it simply is not feasible. Now, coming toward the most important question, is the nuclear option safe? According to researchers, shorter missions would limit the crew's exposure to space radiation, but there is still concern about the radiation emitted from the nuclear reactor inside the spacecraft. This would be mitigated through the rocket's design. The liquid propellants stored between the engine and the crew area block out radioactive particles, acting as a tremendously good radiation shield. The distance between the crew and the reactor also provides a buffer and any NTP design would place the living quarters at the other end of the rocket to the reactor. In addition, to protect people on the ground, NTP spacecraft would not lift off directly from Earth. Instead, a regular chemical rocket would hoist it into orbit and only then would it fire up the nuclear reactor. Once in orbit, it would do little harm as blast and thermal radiation cannot move through a vacuum. So, in case if disaster struck and the rocket's reactor broke up, the pieces would not land on Earth or any other planet for tens of thousands of years. By that time, the radioactive substance would have naturally decayed to the point where it wasn't hazardous anymore. Now, how is NASA planning to use this technology to get humans to Mars? If NASA is to use nuclear propulsion in human missions during the 2030s, it must get started on technology development immediately. So far, the agency has been somewhat reticent to move quickly on nuclear propulsion. This may be partially due to the fact that the space agency is so heavily invested in the Space Launch System rocket and chemical propulsion needed for the Artemis Moon program. In recent years, therefore, NASA has not asked for nuclear propulsion funding. Congress has appropriated money for the effort anyway. In the fiscal year 2021 budget bill, NASA received $110 million for nuclear thermal propulsion development. So, according to sources, it would cost substantially more, at least an order of magnitude, for NASA to work with the Department of Energy and other parts of the government to develop this technology and begin cargo flights to Mars in the mid-2030s. However, this is the kind of project that NASA would be well positioned to undertake. And this is it for today. What are your thoughts on today's video? Share your views with us in the comments below. Also, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell icon for more amazing videos about space. And thank you for watching.